Hello everybody, Jesse here. Today I just wanted to cover some tips and tricks on uh, removing the Fazua FX remote. Uh, this will maybe save you some time and labor. Now, really this is mostly for dealers out there who are doing this service. Uh, if you've got some issue or just simply replacing a remote for whatever reason, and uh, you have your new remote in the package, it's gonna come with the top wire harness and the wire itself that plugs into the bottom bracket that you see here. So um, keep in mind that there are older frames that may have a retrofitted design like you see here with this plastic perimeter, and that's gonna be in the down tube. Uh, if, if you have a bike like that, I'd recommend just reaching out to Fazua before you try to extract that remote, just to make sure that you're doing it right. For all the other bikes that have the remote in the top tube, this should apply to you. So uh, let's uh, let's go over how this thing kind of fits in the frame first. You've got these rubber fins that are on all four sides and really it just grips into the top tube there. It just holds itself in. So this is what you're trying to overcome when you extract this thing. But being that the remote is pretty much flush on the top tube, uh, it's what you want to avoid is getting like a flathead screwdriver and leveraging under it because you're basically just going to leverage against the paint and ruin it. So how do you get one of these out of the frame without damaging the paint? What I recommend using is something like a uh, scratch all that has a 90 or 45 degree bend on it. And what you're going to do instead is more of a hook and pull method. What I like to do is start at the top. I'm going to bring my uh, my all from the side here and then kind of rotate it down into the crack between and while I'm doing this I'm pulling down into it what we want to start to do is compress the rubber on the side and flex it downward as much as possible then what we're going to do is uh, try to pull this remote up pull it back more than up and then we're going to do it across on the other side. So I like to, to do the nose and the tail and work its way back and forth until you have it fully out of the frame. Uh, if you are replacing this, you don't have to worry about uh, maybe even having to use the scratch all and stick it directly into the rubber here, as long as you're protecting the frame and the paint around it. So that's the first step, some tips on getting it out of the frame. Now, once you've got it out, uh, instead of gutting the whole remote, if you're confident that the issue is on the top end and the logic board in here, then here's what you could do as uh, maybe a first try. Um, if, if it ends up being the whole remote is still having issues, then go ahead and replace the whole remote. But in this case, what you can do is you've got the remote out, you can see the top, the wire harness, and the wire. But notice uh, these little earlobe kind of clear tabs on each side of the remote. Take your thumb now and flex it out just a little bit till you feel it click. It doesn't take a lot. I'm not trying to break it. It will be replaced, so it's not a big deal, but try not to break it. Do the same thing on the other. I recommend just doing one at a time. And then you'll see there's a, a little bit of a gap starting to develop here on the edge. And once we've released both sides, all you got to do is just pop it right off. There's really nothing holding it at that point. Now, the logic board should come out with it. However, if this drops on the ground or you kind of slap it in the palm of your hand, you can get the logic board out of here. Just remember the orientation of it and how it aligns with the LED lights. You'll see the LEDs on the board as well. Also notice that there's four pogo pins on the wire harness. Make sure these are the same height. They're clean, and notice the four electrode points on the logic board that line up with that. So now you know how everything goes back together. Take the new remote and do the exact same thing. Just go ahead and pop the top off. Try not to break those tabs. And then go ahead and take the new uh, top half and put it onto the existing wire harness that's already still in the bike. Snap it in and make sure both sides are engaged, and then go ahead and try to power it on. Now, I recommend taking the drive pack out of the frame 
so that you don't have any power going to the remote while you do these steps. Once you've completed this step, don't put the remote in the frame yet. First, test it out. Make sure that you've solved the issue. If you're, conf you know, you're confident that the issue has now been solved, then you can feel better about now pressing this into the frame and then you know, give back to the customer. So those are the two main tips for today, how to kind of work the nose and tail out, as well as maybe just replacing the top half and that'll save you some time actually going in and dropping the bottom bracket. Also notice that the bottom, the, the plugs on the bottom bracket are, there's four pins on each of these, and there is a slot and a key that must be aligned. So um, just because they're round in shape doesn't mean they can rotate, otherwise you'll, you'll break these. So it just pops directly up and out. So anyhow, uh, that's the tip for the day. Thanks everyone, we'll see ya.